Hi everybody, welcome to Scary Tales. Um, I'm Bob, and uh, it's good to see you back here. Thank you so much for coming and visiting. Um, I found this real interesting article on Bigfoot and supposed proof of Bigfoot's existence by the FBI. I'd never heard of this before, and it's really very interesting, and I want to look more into it. But I wanted to share what this guy wrote. Um, his name's Andrew Daniels. He's the um, the editor of the how-to editor of the uh, Popular Mechanics magazine. If y'all are interested in digging that up and um, checking it out, and I also have some pictures of um, the FBI documents, uh, a letter from Peter Byrne to the FBI. I'm I'm gonna uh, just read a little bit about it and tell you guys what I found to be very interesting. Apparently there's, because of the Freedom of Information Act, um, a few years ago, tons of files were released by the FBI. It was real big in the UFO community for a while. There's just tons and tons of stuff on UFOs and, um, and, and all these um, documents that the FBI had released to public information now. And, um, and this, this was, there, apparently there's 22 pages on Bigfoot and uh, the apparent um, apparently you know there's proof that Bigfoot exists and that there there was a dead Bigfoot apparently 22 pages of this stuff uh, very interesting the FBI FBI vault is where you can find it on the internet um, it's the the Bureau's Freedom of Information Act or the FOIA library um, you can find on the internet that, that houses thousands of previously sealed or long buried files on very famous and very dead celebrities, criminals, and politicians and other persons of interest. And they're all on display for free public uh, perusal. You guys can go just read through all these uh, re released documents that was they were previously top secret, uh, apparently. So... Um, or classified, you know, we couldn't read them, we couldn't get to them, nobody could talk about them, but now it's uh, because of the Freedom of Information Act, which I love. Um, you could be on there all day scrutinizing reports from everyone, from Al Capone to Anna Nicole Smith, for, for you could find yourself looking through there all day long, not judging, just saying. Um, now, the FBI usually doesn't make such documents public until after the person is dead, um, or, you know, the show's over, so to say, which makes the uh, latest release from the vault 22 pages concerning a one Bigfoot. Uh, it's particularly notable for um, two reasons, because it, it appear, appears to be confirmation that a Bigfoot is dead and a Bigfoot was real at one at one time. And uh, I'm going to put these pictures up of the FBI Records Vault uh, logo and at FBI Records Vault, uh, the .com and .gov or whatever that is. And the mythical creature known as Bigfoot, or if you prefer Sasquatch or Yowie or Skunk Ape or Yayali, uh, has been a long, murky, it's got a long, murky history. Um, people swear they've been seeing Bigfoot for centuries. Usually in the woods of, of North America, often the Pacific Northwest and and, you know, we all have heard all the stories, and I love the stories. I love uh, hearing them. I love telling them and, and sharing them with people. And um, and the part hairy ape, part hairy human, part hairy bear thing has inspired m much uh, fervor among his fanatics. And he, uh, the fiercest devotees have even gotten the government involved in their pursuit of the truth. Um, Bigfoot's official file, which we, uh, you know, can look through and peruse and um, it mostly follows the correspondence between the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition, the BIC in Oregon, and the FBI's Scientific and Technical uh, Service Division from 1976 to 1977, um, where Peter Byrne, we've all heard of Peter Byrne, I'm sure, uh, one of the big four horsemen of uh, Sasquatch investigators, uh, Bigfoot um, investigators and uh, 
I'm not sure if he is the director anymore, but in 1976, Peter Byrne was the director of the BIC. He requested the FBI test a strange hair sample that he, he found. We, we don't often come across hair which we're able to identify. Um, and the hair we have now is about 15 hairs attached to a tiny piece of skin. It's the first uh, they've obtained in six years, he said, which uh, we feel may be of some importance. And uh, in the fine print, you can see, I'll put the picture up for you all so you can read it, but Peter Burns' letter says uh, to the FBI, Will you kindly, to set the record straight once and for all, inform us if the FBI has examined hair, which might be that of a Bigfoot, when this took place, if it did take place, what the results of the analysis were. And uh, please understand that our research here is very serious, that this is a serious question and needs answering, and that in, an examination of the hair or the opposite by the FBI does not in any way, um, as far as that they're con we're concerned, it says, uh, suggests that the FBI is associated with the project or confirm in any way the possibility of the existence of such creatures, creatures known as Bigfoot by the FBI. So, um, Peter Byrne, uh, had um, requested that, and also there's a piece of the. It was about five inch, five inches long. This piece of hair. Um, I'm going to put the picture up for you guys to see. In a letter back to Burn, though, the FBI admitted that its lab primarily conduct, conducts exams for law enforcement agencies in connection with criminal investigations. But eventually, they agreed to inspect the hairs after several newspapers, including the New York Times and Washington Star News, brought light to Bigfoot's possible existence. So they finally went on to examine it. Um, after several months of follow-ups, uh, which are documented in the file, the FBI delivered results of the test to, to both Byrne and the organization that supported his research, the Academy of Pli Applied Sci Scientists, or Science, I'm sorry. Sadly, Bigfoot was a bust. Um, it was concluded as a result of these examinations that the hairs are of the deer family origin from a uh, deer. So the FBI wrote crushing the dreams of many B Bigfoot believers everywhere, but um, not believers, not true believers, because we know the truth. And um, it just, I'm going to put that letter up. Uh, and you got, you all can um, zoom in on it and read that letter from the FBI if you want. It just goes on to say that they conducted uh, the tests and how they conducted the tests and how they came about the results and that it was in the Deer family. But uh, while this was disappointing... You know, definitely disappointing. By no means is the case closed. For for all we know, the FBI could have Bigfoot documents it isn't showing us. And this is all just a clever ploy to throw us off the scent. And you know how it goes. And uh, in the meantime, we'll just keep searching and hold, holding out hope that the FBI uh, just releases more files. And, um, you know, that's all that's all we can do. But like I was saying earlier, the believers, the people that have seen Bigfoot, they're they're knowers, you know, not believers. They're knowers, and um, there's just too much evidence. Uh, I heard a, a statistic last night: uh, something like 350 million people live in the United States, and then there's like 35 million people that live in Canada. And look how big Canada is. And imagine just putting, there's 35 million people in there, spread them out. Man, there is not much room for uh, anything except desolate forest, thick forest. Uh, as far as the eye can see, nothing but thick forest. Imagine what can possibly be in there. Um, you just, you can't, you know, you can't tell me we didn't... Uh, it, it, uh, discover the mountain gorillas till the 1920s and up until that point that was myth and legend and only the natives local natives knew about it and um, people pointed and laughed and but you know one of these days we're going to get our results and we're going to get um, proof and you know however it happens uh, if the FBI discloses more files whatever but 
we know Bigfoot is real. And until then, we'll just keep searching, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Thank you for coming back to True Scary Tales, and um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.